That's empowerment. So if you want to empower others, remember, it's not empowering, it's inspiring them with a good example. Okay? Cool. So that's empowerment. Let's go to the next one. Uh, I'm hearing some audio. Uh, someone is speaking there. Okay, anyway. Uh, so here you have it. Entrepreneurship is a process of constant change, struggle, and achievement. Constant. It's like being a hero. The people will like you for your struggle because they are going to learn that even it is difficult, it is possible. That's empowerment. Okay? Good. Then, well, uh, uh, those are some questions for you to find your personal fears. I'm sure you're going to receive the PowerPoint later. Now, let me talk about culture. What happens when you go into a very fancy store, uh, a Hugo Boss kind of store? Uh, a lot of us feel uncomfortable, feel like, oh my God, I don't belong here. That's culture. That feeling that is in an environment is part of the culture. What happens when I go to the office of Google? Oh my God, that's so awesome. That's culture. So culture is something that happens where humans are and you have basically two options or you create that culture on purpose or you let it happen. Culture is going to happen where people is. But I personally recommend you that when you are thinking on having your own business, to the, that you should think on what is the culture you want the others to feel. Okay? So welcoming culture, etc. Uh, we have different ways of managing businesses. So you have hierarchies, you have holacracy that is a bit more flat kind of way of managing a business. It doesn't matter. You can choose whichever way you want. But the most important question is who's the shaman? Yeah, it's not a mistake. We all know that someone has to be the manager of the company. The manager is a person that takes care of resources, of schedules, of all the practicalities of the business it is essential. But who is the person in charge of the people? So you can say, okay, the human resources persons are. But is the human resources person have the same authority than the manager? So here am I pre I'm presenting to you an alternative that is a system where authority is divided in two the managerial and the human or personal side. Both of them are some kind of a conflict, but at the same time, they make a wonderful balance of interests. And that's how the humans organized themselves in the past. So it's very much embedded in our way of being. Don't forget about the shaman. Uh, some questions uh, uh, so far? Is it too crazy, this idea? Are you still awake? <laughs> Super. So, for example, me as a founder of my own initiatives, I'm very much of a shaman. I'm very much of a shaman. But Tanya, that is the person that works with me, is very much of a manager. So sometimes I go more on the human side, and she wants to go more on the organizational side. So because both of us have the same authority, 
we have to come up with an agreement. And that agreement is therefore beneficial for how we manage the business and how we take care of our people. That, it, it is wonderful. Um, and actually, there are a lot of uh, research studies about uh, uh, including uh, traditional ways of human organization into companies because we feel like the managers are identified also as leaders, right? When And we get confused with the concept of authority. So are they the, the, the leaders because they have the authority? Is because he's the manager the leader? And we all get confused. But if we understand that the role of the manager is not necessarily to be the leader, uh, a lot of problems get solved. And actually, I asked managers from big companies, what happens if I tell you that you don't need to be the leader anymore, that you can only be the manager? And they said, we pay you whatever you want because the weight and the heavy weight of being a leader is extremely difficult. Is it more clear now? Yes. Okay. We move forward, okay? So feel free to ask questions at any at, at any moment. I'll be happy to answer questions after this event is over as well. So I want to present you an idea uh, that we have to go very fast that is an understanding of human interactions and that's very important if you want to have a culture uh, of innovation. First of all you see in the lower part the section of culture. Our culture present us with external factors and with reasons to be afraid, fear. It's our default default culture. Our culture supports interpersonal relationships, right? Where individuals interact. Now, you have to imagine every individual as being inside of a glass bottle. And the bottles of each one of the persons is thicker or thinner according to different circumstances. Those thicknesses, so the thickness of the glass, is going to affect how we perceive uh, uh, our reality. How do we uh, perceive the messages? So in this case, uh, this group of people, so all of you, are coming from very different cultures, right? from three different continents basically, of our planet. So it is very likely that what, I'm, what I want you to know or to get from my message is different than what you think I want you to know. And it's also different from what you learned. So we have a very big disadvantage. Exists a, a, an issue of communication that is permanent and it always happens. So there's a trick. As soon as we are capable of relating each other as humans in a human level, as soon as we are capable of showing some kind of vulnerability, an instinct comes into our rescue, and that instinct is called empathy. And empathy starts by the understanding that we all feel the same. We feel fear in the same way. We experience love in the same way. We experience pain in the same way. We are humans. When that happens, the thicknesses of our glasses gets thinner. That's why when we are 
having fun with our friends, communications goes much smoother. There's not much resistance. But when we empathize with people, uh, the way we communicate is much better. That's a huge trick. In order to uh, follow up with this, I propose you to align with your team the definitions that are important for you in the following way. What is leadership? Define it. What is authority? Define it. Now compare them both. What's the relationship between leadership and authority? And write one short phrase. And the same for every single definition that is important for your organization. Once you do that, you are going to have aligned the important definitions inside of your team, and you're going to be able to communicate more effectively. Uh, we have two minutes, so I'm going to run fast. Uh, when you talk about innovation, leadership, authority, and these big words that are important for your business and designing your culture, do not think of them as ideas. It's better that you think of them as processes. So how to do that is amazing. It's amazing and it's super amazing. Which are the conditions for innovation, leadership, authority, creativity, inclusion, whatever you want? Which are the conditions for those concepts to naturally emerge? That's the question that you need to answer for each one of these words that, are, that is important. And I'm going to give you one short example. If you plant a seed of a tomato plant, which are the conditions for that tomato to grow and uh, flourish? You know, good soil, enough water, enough light. And it, you will see that if you have all those conditions plus some additional ones, you are going to end up having tomatoes. So how do you make your organization more effective? You have to ask, which are the conditions for that to happen? Okie dokie. Let's... Uh, Okay, so actually, basically, we are basically at the end. And guys, the deepest advice I could provide to you is business has to be, must be easy. Because business is the transaction, is what do I have that you want to buy? Business is easy. Purpose value added is harder. So do not equate the hardship of what you want to achieve, like what you said at the beginning, right? Changing the world, helping others, etc., etc., right? That's hard. Don't equate that hardship with your capacity of making money because they're two different things. And if you want to engage in uh, uh, entrepreneurship, always ask yourself, who made the rules? That's it from me, guys. So if we have time, uh, uh, I'm happy to answer some questions. So guys, we are basically back at you. Do you have any more questions for Jose? Or will you sleep over, wake up with, when you are 70, and then you will ask some more questions via email, perhaps? <laughs> Just don't sleep until you have 70 to send me the email, because then we'll have problems.
Yeah, it's going to be a bit late then. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I will not wake up. Jose, thank you very much. You were you were excellent as always and very inspiring. For me, even more inspiring than empowering. And um, I'm grateful. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. It's, it's really my pleasure. I hope that something uh, uh, was useful for the rest of the attendees. Uh, I'm there for you, for all of you. So uh, it's very easy to reach me. Uh, you have there my email. Uh, I'm in Facebook, YouTube, everywhere. So if you have questions, if you would like to, uh, uh, to talk to me, share your ideas and get some feedback, I'll, I'll be very happy uh, 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 to attend. Nice meeting you too, guys. Okay, I'll, I'll close then my, my, my video. So I wish you a good night. Thank uh, you, Jose, very much. We'll uh, stay in touch. Thank you. Bye. Bye.